And we're back, live here from South by Southwest, the Monster Energy Invitational, our leadoff best of three of the day. Evil Genius is taking on Team Ehug. Game one, a bit of a quick end, if we're honest, lopsided affair, Giannis. We, yep. I mean, Ehug, I really love that they pulled the trigger on early aggression. They tried to run the offensive tri-lane. Unfortunately, their transition from that. They started out well, they got first blood, but their gain from it just really wasn't there. Jiggle Billy on the Marana, just never really able to get himself into gear. And then once things began to move and we started to see the map carved up, in particular by Arteezy's Tinker, they just kind of lost momentum and ran out of steam. And by the time all was said and done, EG was just so overly farmed. It was yeah. uh, right about the time they brought down that mid set of racks. They had to have been about 20,000 gold ahead. However, that was game Dying one. This down. is game two. And we can see Ehug this time picking up the visage for themselves, grabbing the Beastmaster very early on as well. To do that, though, they had to give away the Naga Siren and the strong support pick in Crystal Maiden. Yeah, I mean, Crystal Maiden has gotten some big hits. I personally am not really the biggest fan of that here anymore, Ten but with Naga Siren, remaining. it is very nice because the aura is obviously, especially, and, you know, you can gank pretty Five easily still with Crystal Maiden remaining. as long as you, like, get, like, a couple levels up, get a couple branches on you so you can actually cast both your spells because, you know, that minus three int and then those other time. nerfs that have hit that hero in the past kind of hurt. But I'm really surprised to be seeing this Beastmaster picked up so early. I know that we've been talking about it with a few of the teams that there's these, these bugs that are currently going on where you place wards yep. on the hawk yep. the, or on the visage birds, and it places the ward exactly on the spot where it is, no matter where the location is. So you yep. can place wards inside of Roche Pit, inside of un, like, ungettable places in the trees, so you can block camps and stuff like that and get great vision with those things. So I think we'll be seeing some of that. But also, Team Eha decided just to ban out two offlaners right away, right off the bat. So, Yeah, and like you said, taking out the Knicks, and the, uh, the clockwork, I'm not going to give Universe Radiant his bad again. And, you know, bang. Universe, he was just quietly effective Dyer in game one. You know, he, he, there was no big moment of standout play or anything, but he did his job. And he was such a big part, again, of carving that map up and making sure that, uh, that there was plenty of space everywhere they needed to have it and allowing Arteezy and Fear to find their farm Radiant and to be as effective bang. as possible. The second ban phase continues. They're not going to allow PPD to be back on Bane. EG, though, they're focusing more on the carries now, taking out the Luna. Yeah, good ban there. I mean, just Luna with Beastmaster as well as Visage is a lot of push. It really adds up, and just the Beastmaster aura yeah. plus the Luna aura it really starts taking things down. We see Mirana picked up by EJ, so we're going to be seeing that team pick. more than likely up on fear. We're going to be seeing this Naga Siren. I'm assuming it's going to be, that's, a, that's an RTZ hero, so yeah. we'll be seeing him just farming up that mid lane. And I mean, we could still be seeing this Beastmaster either off lane or middle from Ehug, so I'm very interested to see how they're going to end up doing this. Honestly, like looking at, at just the way things have matched up and the way the last game went, it wouldn't surprise me one little bit. I mean, they could do a number of things. Arteezy on the Naga Siren, like you said, that makes the most sense. Crystal Maiden is great to set up Sacred Ten Arrows coming out of the Marana. So an offensive trial lane, I think, would make a lot of sense right now. Doing Radiant it in the face of a Lifestealer, though, can be a little bit of a chancy proposition, very difficult to capitalize on Sacred Arrow combinations in that, uh, in that regard. And uh, Ehug is just, I mean, the Lifestealer pick makes so much sense. You already have so many heroes that counter the Lifestealer Stealer pick taken out. Beastmaster they pick for themselves. Bane banned out. Life, uh, the uh, Bat Rider banned out. Clockwork banned out. So this Life Stealer for the most part should be in really good shape. A problem he's going to have to watch out for Ten though seconds. is when he Remain. rages and if the Naga Siren pops her sleep immediately, he's isolated with absolutely Five no supporting cast Remain. behind him. Yeah, I mean I, I kind of disagree with you a little bit because this Naga Siren's an amazing hero versus Life Stealer because obviously yeah, that goes through a rage. Yep. This minus armor and everything and just the illusions. Life Stealer later on, if this Naga gets farmed, he cannot really handle these illusions yep. unless he has like a Battle Fury or a Mjolnir or something like that along yep. these lines. And Potom also fares very well against Life Stealer because obviously the leap and you can just kite him around and all these things. So I, I kind of disagree a little bit. They did ban out a lot of these heroes that do, do limit the uh, Life Stealer, but Naga Siren and Potom are very, very strong versus it. So. Oh, yeah. And the Ensnare, like you said, it goes through Magic Immunity. That just adds more on top of it. So, I mean, it's, I, I, I think it makes a lot of sense what they've done. But now what I think they really need more than anything is a way for him to aggressively get into these fights. A yeah. Storm Spirit pick up, something along those lines, just a way for him to come in as a surprise. Even a Puck could be an option as well. Certainly would give them some much-needed AoE. And being able to silence these heroes out with a well-placed Waning Rift can make that a high-value pick as well. E.g., yeah, though, for sure. in the meantime, still waiting to uh, finish out their front four. And waiting to see... I Again, I really think up, they're actually going to go with a Morphling pick up here. Dire team pick. That's a bit strange, actually. So maybe it's actually going to be a support Naga. Mm -hmm. And I know I've been seeing RTZ playing this Morphling middle, yep. which I know he really likes. So maybe we'll be seeing him pulling out this Morphling middle, maybe support Naga, maybe even a support Potom. Yeah. Let's see what we can do. We've seen it before. You never know what could happen. So yeah. I actually really like a support Potom um, in most cases. Uh, you know, again, you, you sacrifice, but you take what you take. And just... 
once she's level six, Ten she's going to give you quite remaining. a lot. I mean, Sacred Arrow, not hard to max at all. Yes, you're, you're not going to have as many points in the lead Five or Starfall, remaining. but having the Sacred Arrow maxed out, having Moonlight Shadow, and there's that puck pick that we uh, we anticipated Radiant coming out. Makes battle. a ton of sense for E-Hug. I like it even better than the Storm Spirit pick, to be completely honest. But yeah, Mirana doesn't necessarily have to be in a one, two, or three position to feel effective so long as you have the proper lineup built around her. The question mark, as you said, though, is going to be the mid position. Naga Siren, Morphling, don't know. We'll have to find out. E-Hug's team a little bit remaining. easier to gauge. Likely a mid puck, Life Stealer farming with a supportive visage and a yet to be un and a yet remaining. unnamed player, while the Beastmaster sets up shop in the off lane. Yeah. And we'll probably be seeing that, that little bit of that time. bug abusing of those wards. Yeah. Probably, I'm saying. like, But also, I wonder if we're going to see a jungler come out this game for E-Hug. Maybe they'll go for an Enchantress or Chen. I know they're big fans of this Enchantress whenever they have like you know a Beastmaster plus even, I mean, Life Stealer plus like a visage, like a strong <laughs> dual lane that can actually han handle their own. Right. And the last couple of bands out, EG, getting rid of the uh, Disruptor. So uh, taking away some team fight from E-Hug, and E-Hug waiting to show us what they want. I mean, this is just, the, you know, whenever you look at a lineup like EG is drafted and you're just Radiant not sure what they're going to do, that's a good sign. It's very ambiguous, very tough to nail down, very tough to pin down in terms of what you have to prepare for. So, I mean, if you were drafting for E-Hug right now, what are you thinking is most, uh, most uh, likely to be their lanes? Well, they're probably, I mean... It's, it's, I mean, it's pretty obvious. The life series is definitely going to go short lane. They're going to have the Visage up there just doing some... Not EG's. Oh, EG. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's too hard to tell, honestly. Right. Like, they could even... They could still put this... Remaining. What? Now I'm, now I'm just lost. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's pick. probably going to be an aggressive tri lane. Yeah. Or maybe dual lanes. We could do this, like, Naga and Potom off lane with, mm -hmm. like, a Void, Crystal Maiden, short lane, and a Morphling middle. Or they, yeah. could, they really could do so much. They have four agility heroes on their team, which is a little bit odd. But it could definitely work for them. Yeah, like... Seeing this come out, I'm, I'm with you on the Morphling. I think that's going to be, end up being the RTZ mid. I mean, it, it could just be fairly cookie-cutter support Naga Siren. I mean, going back to the International uh, the international 3, that's really where you saw the Naga the most was in support. So it's not like it's a shock. It's just whenever you see where she's Five played now, and especially knowing the proclivities of RTZ, that's why you would anticipate that. But I, it looks Reserve to me like time. it's going to be pretty simplistic. Naga, Crystal Ten Maiden, Faceless Void. Remaining. They do have some aggressive potential in the, from the supports. Faceless Void, though, his laning presence Five can be a little hit remaining. and miss depending on what he's up against. It is going to be that Shin pick, yep. though, coming out of E-Hug. Yeah, so we can see a lot of things. And yeah, we see fear, fear on the bottom. So it's support TM and support Naga, just like we said. And Universe on a Void. So that is a little bit out of the ordinary. I don't know yeah. if I've actually seen him play that at all. In, a ma in matches. I know it's one of his big heroes in uh, matchmaking. He loves the hero, I'm pretty sure. Yep. So we'll be seeing it. They do have a lot of setup for this arrow, too, later on. They have this Chronosphere sets up for the arrow. They have the sleep into arrow. They have yep. net into arrow, of course. But you can't rage out of the arrow if it hits you. Like, if it hits you in the sleep right afterwards, you catch it. Even if you rage, that stun hits you through it. Yep. It's pretty devastating. What I think we're going to end up seeing here is an aggressive tri lane out of EG. They're going to end up running the Naga, the Crystal Maiden, and the Mirana aggressively, RTC mid, and they're going to try to isolate the Faceless Void one on one against the Beastmaster, secure him some solo farm and solo levels. Ten I think that makes the most remaining. sense, and especially whenever you see the Chen. I mean, it's pretty damn obvious where a Chen's going to wind up. Remaining. And very rarely you'll see a Chen run as a part of an aggressive tri lane, but it just makes it very tough for Ehug to even try to dodge that, even if they wanted to do so. So we'll see how the lanes are going to take shape, but once again, Prepare. welcome in to game two of the Monster Energy Invitational here on the floor of South by Southwest Interactive in beautiful Austin, Texas. And a special shout out, of course, to those who are joining us via in-game and, of course, via the Twitch stream. And uh, really just such a pleasure to be bringing you all of the action over the next couple of days. Only our first series, our second series coming up later that'll be Team Liquid taking on E-Hug, or excuse me, taking on um, Cloud9. And uh, then, of course, our Ability Draft, our All-Stars match, which should be a lot of fun to end the day. The lanes take shape, and as they do, how about we take a look at who's handling who. PPD will be playing on our Crystal Maiden this time with Marana, handled by Fear as we saw. Going to be Universe, and he's actually out in the off lane right now. He's playing on our Faceless <laughs> Void with Naga Siren, played by Zai, and Morphling, as anticipated, played by Arteezy. On the side of the river, we've got Pandago playing on our Chem. We're going to have Cakes, who was honestly probably the best performer from Ehug in Game 1. He'll be on the Beastmaster with Puck, handled in mid by Rhea Boros. The Life Stealer pickup, going to be handled by Jigabilly, uh, Jigglebilly. Struggled quite a bit in game one. Going to be looking to get things back on track here. And I'm a Sheep will be on our Visage. Yeah, and EG right away. They know this means best on, Beastmaster offlane. They don't want Ancient Stacks at all, so they block it right away with the Century Ward. And it looks like they're just going to do this passive tri lane, get PPD in the jungle, get him some levels up while they just do pulls with the Naga Siren and get levels there like that. And then putting a Void just completely in the offlane. I, I think we've seen it very, very rarely. 
I know I saw uh, Fnatic do it like once or one or twice, but it's a very, very rare decision. Illusion. And yeah, they're instantly countering that ward. Yep. Have to deal with that. They know that it's just such a big boom to a Beastmaster having the ability to do that. And that'll be something that EG tries to battle with across, uh, across the entire laning phase. It looks like, uh, as you said, Pandago hanging here, at least for the moment. And uh, talk to me about this offlane matchup, though. This is something, like you said, very rare, sticking a Faceless Void out in the offlane. Uh, he can definitely get, he's going to get decent levels. And he's got a, so much regen on him. So, I mean, he's going to be able to get good levels, decent, like maybe a few last hits, but not too much. And he doesn't really have to do too much up there. He just has to avoid dying, which is pretty easy for him because they don't really have any lockdown for him. And he's got his time lock, so. But I wanted to point out one other thing. Real Warrior is actually having a really weird time. I usually see him do spectacular blocks in mid lane, but these past two games, he actually messed up his block and let a creep go through. So the lane is probably going to go a little bit in Arteezy's favor. Yeah, Arteezy here in mid on the Morphling. I mean, Morphling just one of those heroes who, I mean, any more shotgun build seems to be quite, uh, quite the standard thing. But just getting him ahead in levels just by virtue of how the hero works in terms of universe actually going to be caught with the slow, but able to make his way back under the tier one, as you said. Has a fair amount of regen. We'll go ahead and solve himself back up. He's sitting at level two and a half, so he's soaking decent experience, at least for the moment. But yeah, you know, so long as Arteezy gets off to a good start here, you can actually begin to feel very, very effective on a Morphling, despite how hungry he is for gold, so long as he's adequately leveled, and especially if you get a kill or two here or there. I think one thing that Rio Boris should really be noticing as like a mid player that you should notice is Arteezy only had two shared tangos and he did go for this Wraith Band build early. So he's got very little to no regen up on him. And yeah, he's got only one tangle left and he just ferried himself a salve and he's not even that close to his bottle yet. So I think Rio Boris should really be just taking advantage and missing maybe a couple CS and just really just hitting him hard with harassment. You can see Universe trying to do his job and Mess with the creep camps, but unable to do much of anything effective. We're going to see Cakes grab himself a haste rune. He's right on top of PPD. PPD forced to blow the frostbite, and Cakes happy to just steal the rune and make it back into lane. And yeah, I mean, everything right now kind of going status quo. We can see Fear is actually atop the CS board. Chicklebilly isn't far behind. It's 11 and 10, respectively. Cakes himself has gotten only one, but certainly soaking Snacks up a fair amount, a fair amount of levels here, and that haste rune got to help with that. He's on his way to level three. Yeah, I mean, Universe is doing a little bit better, though. He's already level 3. He's got one point in each thing. He's got 300 gold on his belt, but he's used a lot of his regen already, so... But he's, he's just staying up there. He's playing very, very aggressively up there. He's just staying in experience rate, just doing all he can with this. And Pendego right now, haven't really been looking at him too much. He's got his Wildkin up. He's doing a little bit of jungling right now, some stacking with the Tornado, and he's got his level 3 up now. And we can see Universe actually giving a little bit of harassment now. There is the Grave Chill, but no follow-up from Jingle Billy. Not wanting to overcommit right now, instead opting to focus more on CS and just maintaining control of this lane. But, I mean, at what point is it going to be a concern, the fact that Universe really isn't getting any CS, sitting at just three right now? I'm not really too sure if it is a concern, because his hero, they don't really need to have that much farm on him. They already have these other carries that are just going to be doing that job. So he just really needs a couple levels, get this Chronosphere up, and it's pretty huge with an arrow set up for an arrow. Um, the thing is that Ehug really can't push him out of the lane. I think what they really should be doing is they should have this Chen incorporate into the push right away. Because what can Avoid really do to stop a tower push? Not a whole lot. He doesn't have spam. He can't really pull aggro off the creeps or anything. So I think when they had this catapult wave coming, I think the Chen should have probably rotated there right away and gone yeah. for the push. It looks like he's going to go behind the tower. So. Going to look to try and make a dive happen. Universe eats through another tree. Is it about three oh, quarters? Oh, Cakes is in out. trouble bottom. Cakes down at bottom, caught out, and Cyan Fear able to tally first blood. In the meantime, looks like Pandego wants the counter punch in position and going to make a run at Universe. Universe has one point in the time walk, will make it away just barely, doesn't have a TP, trying to eat his way through, but a return kill for e -Hug. So first blood goes the way of EG, but E-Hug quick to counter punch. Yeah, and the good thing for E-Hug right now is, oh, Pandego get aggro off. Radiance top good. tower is They have attack. a good tower push going right now. They have a Chen creep up with a good amount of mana. He claps the creep wave, but Void comes right back up there, and he's going to get a good amount of experience and just stop that tower push entirely. In the meantime, here in mid, Rio Boro sitting at 16 CS, slightly behind Arteezy. Arteezy with, uh, yeah, he's actually going to go and grab boots right now. So he's in great shape in terms of his own item development down at bottom. We can see the supports from EG doing a fair job as well. PBD coming up on level four. Same thing for Naga Siren, just about halfway there. When we begin to see this laning phase break down, and honestly, it may not even be all that long from now, which team do you think is under the gun the most to really have an impact between five and 15 minutes? I mean, it's kind of hard to say still because EG does have four agility heroes, but they do have a void in the offlane. So I don't think anybody's in too much of a rush to do anything, but they can definitely go get some kills if they would like to. Like, PPD's picking up a smoke off this career pretty soon, and we might see some rotation coming out of him, either maybe going behind the bottom tower or something like that or, or whatnot. And, yeah, Cakes actually has 
A nice double stack of Ancients going on. They've reblocked it again, though, with the Sentry. We can see RTZ continuing to just clear waves here in mid. He's actually now overtaken Jigglebilly for the most CS on the board. 26 for Fears Marana, so EG sitting in quite good shape there. The Chen, though, I mean, his movement is really going to matter so much. I mean, we saw him come out. They managed to tally the kill on Universe. That's nice. That Tier 1 tower is still standing, though, and I'm beginning to kind of come to the same mind as you. This needs to drop sometime soon. They need to yep. just clear that out and not let Universe get free experience anymore. Yeah, and, and Jiggle Billy opted for phase boots right away instead of going for this rushing Midas, so they know that. And Arteezy getting a little bit of pressure on him in mid lane. Yep, still both. pretty up there. Yep, still able to morph his strength back yep. and be in pretty good shape. Yeah, we haven't really seen this morphling middle too much since what, TI, like yeah. TI2 even. Yep. And yeah, it looks like these two supports might be making their rotations pretty soon. Zai is already very close to his arcane boots. Yep. Zai has been absolutely standout. Cakes, though, caught by the ensnare. Follow up with PBD. Going to try to TP home and will not make it as Cakes ends up dying to PBD's Frost Nova. Two to one. EG once again back in the lead. That's going to be a, uh, a Hannah Midas pickup now on Fear. So playing very, very greedy, but why not? I feel like this early laning phase has really benefited them a ton. Yeah. And yeah, if you look at the gold Dyer's game, just on the back, yes, attack. they have a one kill lead, but really most of that gold lead they've generated, nearly 1,500 right now, is pure efficiency lead. And they're they're beating down this bottom tower with this Bassy, and Beastmaster's not really going to make there in time because he used his TP to try to get out there and didn't really get it. So that's a pretty big hit. And this tower's probably going to go down because if he steps up, it could be devastating. For him. Dyer's bottom yeah, tower. Beastmaster trying attack. to do what he can with the axes. They will go ahead and pop the cliff though, and no reaction as of not right now. Up at top, looks like they want to pressure this top tower, but Universe is right there and he's almost level Dyer's six. Bottom tower. And you know, so long as Universe can sit in this lane, it's going to get harder and harder for them to try and make something happen. Riaboros in mid takes a little bit of extra damage from our. Easy. But yeah, once he has up Chronosphere, it is so chancy to try and dive a tower because he can Chrono and just wait for TPs. Yeah, we see EG. They, the two supports did smoke up now afterwards. And Zai has such early Arcane Boots, and that was before the tower even went down. This first blood really, really benefited him. Oh yeah. Level 4 coming up on level 5 for him. PPD is already level 5 and has actually massed, uh, Max Nova, and that's always Shadow. the question, you know, it's Take us. up, hang on, we're actually going to see Marana pop Moonlight Shadow, and Riaboros could be in some serious trouble. Caught out, it, where was he? There used to be a puck right there, <laughs> and Dyer's there isn't anymore. He's a very attack. upset little Shakespearean hero. In the meantime, we can see some pressure being put on. Pandago going to be ensnared now behind the tower. They're going to follow it up, and he's going to drop just as quickly. And EG, unfortunately for Ehug, is blowing this game open, and they have a team that can't snowball off of this kind of movement so hard. Yeah, and oh, Zai might take a drop here, though. Yep. If she gets a couple more hits on him. There's the ensnare, and yep. The oh, soul. Zai actually got himself killed there. The Soul Sumption wasn't going to do much, but he hit the sheep, and he hit sheep, and the damage gave him those charges for Soul Sumption. And here comes Riaboros, looking to catch up with Arteezy. Does have a coil. Did not spend it, though, behind that. We actually see PPD Dragon Creeps and spot it out. They know exactly where he's coming. He's got help in the form of Universe. Puck does manage to finish off Arteezy behind the fight, but uh, at least able to bring down the Morphling. Pretty big kill there. That was a bit odd. Arteezy had, like, two charges on his bottle. I think he might have been morphing to agility? I'm yeah. not sure what happened there. But Lifestealer actually goes for the Midas now after his phase boots. Universe now taking up station here in mid, at least temporarily. Getting some much needed CS. Taking a look at the overall CS board, we can see it is Fear and Jiggle Billy both right at the top, just short of 60 CS. Arteezy a little bit further behind, but more importantly, way ahead of Riaboros, who just got bullied around in this lane. And he is nowhere near a blink dagger right now. Universe right on top of him. He is level six, and yep, got a chrono. And no phase shift going to save you there. Arteezy finishing it up. And this is beginning to look quite scary. 4,000 gold their advantage with Dyer's only tower one tower down, attack. soon to be two, though. Yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate from Pandego before when they were doing this rotation toward middle. Zai was going... Oh, I thought they were going to get Dyer's that deny. <laughs> to but fallen. yeah, Zai was going behind this tower to catch the puck if you or backwards, and Pandego just ran right into him and just got slain with more fling, so... PPD and Universe trying to bring down a free centaur here, but we can already see the positioning of EG. They're basically just pitching a 10 here in this middle lane. And uh, all of that map control that E-Hug would have loved to have had is just completely gone now. Jigglebilly is continuing to farm, but again, having Dyer's gone the Midas, he's still a little attack. bit away from really feeling like an impact in a lot of these fights. And he's going to be actually caught by Zai. There is the ultimate song of the Siren has Ensnare on the ready. Oh, yeah, actually, they tried he to cut it, it too close. Ensnare is going to be there, though. Universe is there. And going to get a time First lock. hit bash. Yep. And he's actually going to infest into the Ursa, or the Hellbear Smasher. Now they want to re-engage. Out he comes. 
Sai in trouble, just bought time. Fear forced to retreat at top. There's the open wounds, and Sai is going to be a nice return kill. Riaboros trying to jump to the south and cut off Fear. But with Fear popping the ultimate, should be able to hook up with the rest of his team and remain safe. Universe does not have up a Chronosphere yet. Wow, Arrow barely misses Riaboros. Fear playing very aggressive. Going to be caught with a coil now. And that might just about be that. He's silenced out, not before doing a bit of damage. Here comes Universe, but he is forced to jump away as well. Behind that, we see Fear actually able to make it away. It's going to be PPD, who's now cut out. Arteezy going to work, though. Doing a lot of right click. There's the freezing field from PPD. Rio Boros drops. Pandago makes it a double kill for the Crystal Maiden as Arteezy takes a little bit of extra gold with the bird kills as well. Nine to five. EG run out of that gank attempt to top able to turn it around in their favor nonetheless. Yeah, and I thought that was actually going to go a lot better for E-Hug after that. They were they overstayed their welcome really Radiant's there. After he fested that Hellbird Smasher, attack. I think they probably should have backed out because, you know, the ta Dyer's Tier 1 tower is right there. Is yep. So a little bit of overextension, but it ended up working out well for them because they just went into their jungle. They have this offensive ward down in the Dire jungle, which gets some spots out everything that's happening. So they took initiative and they just really just got a couple kills there and it was really good for them. They do have a lot of Midas's on them as well, so like they're getting this action coming out early and they have these Midas's in just in case. Yep. And following that engagement, again, referring back to the goal graph, just continues to be a steady arc upwards. Getting close to 7,500 in, in favor of EG. Just about 4,000 experience now. And E-Hug, you know, again, same position they were in last time. This, this map is just beginning to collapse around them. We can even see EG grouping as four now and ready to make something happen. Smoke on Fear and on Zai PPD uh, there as well as they try to use the universe for bait. They're going to have a chance to catch Jigglebilly if he hangs around at all, but able to retreat. But this tier Bottom one. Bottom lane right now. Yep, he's getting a little bit of damage on him, but attack. he should be perfectly fine here. Yep. Morphing strength. Not able to do a whole lot of return damage, but certainly able to make it away. In the meantime, up at top, we can see the arrow actually blocked by the Visage Dyer's Familiar. RTZ is still attack. okay down there. There's going to be a, a Chronosphere from Void. And I'm a Sheep eating a lot of right click, but not enough. Not enough to bring him down anyway. And we're going to see him sent home by Chen. So nice play by E-Hug and a nice way to withdraw there with minimal losses. Yeah, and they could have actually done a lot more with that if these two guys didn't really engage on this Morphling. I think they really shouldn't have because they're looking at this guy. He's got an ulti more up. He's ultimate orb up. He's very tanky, and yep. especially with Morph and everything. It's a really hard kill to go for. And they blew Coil and Roar on him. Uh-oh, Ruborez is in trouble right now. Yep, down at bottom. Oh, nice face shift trying to dodge out Arteezy, however. One adaptive strike after some auto attack. Still managed to lock him down. In the meantime, EG also doing work at the top lane. Tier 1, Dyer's just about to be rubble. The Visage Familiar is coming in, trying to get in position for the deny, and just going to end up feeding them, and Void still manages to get the last hit on the tower. So right now, all EG, pretty much across the board, and Cakes eating some damage as well. Arteezy caught by the Grave Chill. They're going to try to TP someone into bottom to turn this around. Jigglebilly there with the open wounds. Cakes has an ultimate in five seconds, but they're not going to need it. Axe is there, and another very nice kill. However, they're, just, they're able to pick off Arteezy twice now, but still... Too much is going going the way of EG elsewhere on the map. Yeah, absolutely. E Jiggle Billy's doing very well with this game. I mean, he has three assists. He doesn't really have the most kills. Obviously, he's at zero right now. But he's got good farm. And he's. I think he's going to be going for this armlet very soon. So yeah. his, his farm's good. But it's not really going to be making up for the fact that Puck is absolutely Dyer's nowhere near his point. No. Attack. He doesn't even have treads up. He has belt into giant strength, and he's gotten killed a few times by RTZ. So it's, it's not looking too good for Rio Boris right now. But he does have a max winning rift. And, it, of course, it could get a big comeback with one team fight. Up at top, Riaboros might be in trouble again. We see a lot of convergence on him. He will have the orb thrown out and manages to die. Ooh, arrow Radiant just a little bit too short, but uh, or too much of the left, I should say, wide left. But Ehug responding quickly and EG wisely extricating themselves from the jungle. 16 kills in 14 minutes, another fairly active game. Void's actually Radiant gone straight for a Mask of Madness, so... E.G., as these items continue to develop, most likely going to just want to continue to put the screws to them, not give them time to farm up any other items. Yeah, I actually thought Universe was going to go for a Midas as well, but Mask of Madness, I mean, it's good. He doesn't really have the most farm, so he's not doing the most damage, so he's going to make up for that by getting more attack speed so that his time lock makes up for the damage that he's missing inside of his Chronosphere. And taking a look elsewhere and checking items, Fear. Looks like he's going to want to get, one would imagine, a Manta style up. I don't know. I mean, going straight up Ultimate Orb. It could be. It could yep. still be a Lincoln's as well, you know, to yep. block the roar and the, all those other things, like exactly. Rachel and whatnot. So it's a, it's possible. And it looks like both of these heroes, it looks like both the Chen and the Naga Siren are both going to get their max about at the same time. So not too great for Pandago. Because, you know, he does have a couple of deaths under his belt. But very good for Zai getting this mech and arcane boots up on this Naga Siren. 
Actually see Arteezy trying to take the Ancients away from Ehog and wisely gets away just as Jigglebilly <laughs> follows up to try and uh, clean out the remainder of it. But yeah, things kind of calming down a little bit on the map right now and really want to see what, uh, what Ehug has in store for us. I mean, they have a, a team that innately wants to play aggressively, but you can't underestimate just how much of, or how damaging it is to have Riaboros this far behind. You look at the net worth, you can see four of the top five all on the side of EG, and Puck is nowhere near there. Puck out of mid lane is actually less farm than the off lane Beastmaster is. Yeah, and, and the Crystal Maiden's out farming the Puck too, so PPD is yep. actually doing really good. That, that double kill from his ultimate really gave him a good amount, a good chunk of money, so. Looking good for him. He's got Tranquil Boots and Urn up on this Crystal Maiden, so that's, that's really all you need on that hero. <laughs> Everything else is just, you know, just, just good stuff. Arteezy in great shape, 2,000 gold aside from his Midas Treads and Ultimate Orb. And actually going to go ahead and replicate Jiggle Billy as well. But you can just tell by the posturing of Ehug. They're not very comfortable right now. They know Radiant's the map control is not in their is favor whatsoever. And EG just continuing to, su to suffocate them. That's how it feels. Radiant's just slowly tightening a noose. Has fallen. Yeah, and I'm wondering what this Beastmaster is actually going to be going for. He has 2,300 gold up on him. Maybe it'll be a blink. Maybe it'll be a four staff. Maybe it'll be something completely different. I guess we'll see pretty soon once he decides to buy it. And Rio Boris is just trying to find farm really anywhere. He's about 1,200 gold from his blink, so... Not the best, but trying to pull something out. He really needs that blink so the life can just close the gap and just really attack. get a couple of kills. Up at top, the tier two now under assault. All of EG stationing themselves in the jungle, ready for a big team fight. Universe level eight has that mask of madness up, as you mentioned. Now a bit more of an offensive threat, but the threat of the Chronosphere just makes Dyer's it so hard. Like basically, fallen. anytime EG beats E Hug to an important spot, be it just engaging on a tower or anything else, it's going to be very difficult for uh, E-Hug to try to, to come forward to even get into position. Now, Real Universe is big trouble right now, yeah. Yep. Arrow there, and kill secured by Old Man Dota as Fear puts himself on a killing spree. But, I mean, right now, it, we're, just, we're still short of 20 minutes in. Things are beginning to fall apart for E-Hug. What's the blueprint to get things back under control? I mean, it's going to be really hard because they're lacking a lot on all this money and everything. And it looks like Beastmaster is actually rushing his eggs, but EG is really just controlling so much of the map right now. They have wards down blocking Pandigo's neutral camp, so he can't really get the best creeps as possible. And then they're now they're going to have constant Naga illusions running through the jungle, keeping an eye on everybody. It's, it's going to be really hard for Ehug, really. They need to get this Puck's blink up. But even with that, it's going to be tough, because these towers are just going to all be falling, and they're going to lose all of their map control. Dyer's and it's really going to be, it's gonna be extremely difficult for them really to do anything, because EG can just play it passive, and they have four agility heroes. Yep. So no matter what, the later this game goes, it's not really that beneficial. Arteezy caught, and Riaboros there to help follow it up. Cakes lands the roar. Do they have the burst? Arteezy trying to make it away. Will be caught with a coil and a great kill for Ehug as they caught him playing a little bit greedy and really if there's anything that has plagued Arteezy throughout the majority of this first match, when he gets greedy, Ehug has done a pretty solid job of punishing him. Yeah, I mean they did have to blow absolutely everything <laughs> on him though, but right. now they might actually be able to get a tower out of it. Yep. I say maybe, but there's a lot of reaction already coming out right away. Maybe we'll see a pot of multi and engage coming out of EG right here. Yep, Zyne moving into position, coming in from the east side. And let's see if and when. He's ready to go. The Hawk flew right over top. They're able to clear the wave, and here we go. Pandego Universe doesn't have Chronosphere, didn't need it, but able to make his, his way away through healing by the mech. And it looks like EG really unable to just force an engagement. They are going to catch Riaboros as he tries to make his way up the river. And the arrow... Ooh, Ooh, very close. So close. Yeah, they didn't even have to pop the mech there, though, because Fear actually picked up his Lincolns right away and he used it as well, again on the Void. So it blocked the Soul Assumption there, so Void wasn't really in too much trouble with that. And now Real Boris is going to get caught again. Yep. Universe right there with him. Fear already did spend his arrow. Oh, they, yep, got him anyway. Zion position to finish him off with a Riptide. And really, that's been the story of a lot of e Hug's struggle so far. We have yet to see Jiggle Billy take advantage of the fact that there's a puck on team a single time in this entire match. He is just so, so broke. He's more broke than the chin. Yeah, it's it's really unfortunate for him. I mean, Visage is going to start catching up and probably pass this puck pretty soon. Dyer's middle tower. It's going to be really attack. a lot up to Jiggle Billy, but even with that, Morphling fallen. is such a strong hero versus Lifestealer. Yep. Lifestealer goes on him, and Morphling's like, whatever, you want to fight me? I'll man up on you. And Good luck. Yep. Especially with the Manta style and Midas up and everything already this early. Already has a Vlad's out as well, as wow. we see. Yep, that's good. Zai is super farmed as well on this Naga Siren. Yep. The Familiar is going to get a stun on Universe, but they should be able to drop these pretty easily. A little extra Dyer's gold going the way of attack. Evil Geniuses. And down they go. But yeah, and they got these Familiars as well, and that was a freshly summoned Familiar. So now they're probably going to just go right for this Roshan. Yep. As we can see, 100 seconds until 
the Visage can get Familiars back on, on the board. And like you said, Roshan, very appetizing target. Faceless Void just about level 11 now. Yeah, Jiggle, look, look where Jiggle Billy's farming. <laughs> In the enemy jungle at their big camp. He's yep. just like, you know what? I gotta find my farm somewhere, guys. Yep. Not sure. Uh, that's not your jungle, Jiggle Billy. Just, uh, <laughs> might have got turned around, and he's gonna get spotted. PBD. Oh, it's actually gonna be in some trouble. There's the open wounds. The rest of EG isn't close by. And Jiggle trying to chase him through the woods. PPD actually caught with the mech and now follows it up. Yes. Arrow after the frostbite and Jiggle. Little greedy boss trying to farm heroes instead <laughs> of farm creeps and it got you in trouble. Yeah, he, I mean, he really does need to make something happen. Like, yeah. I mean, going for a Crystal Maiden kill is a little bit crazy because, you know, they, ha they have this mech and everything to up. But that was a great port and great reaction from Zai to save his teammate there. Yep, absolutely. Arteezy, he's large. He's got a Manta style up with his Trez and his Ring of Aquila. He also has up yet another Ultimate Orb, and now they're going to make their way into the Roche pit. Roche, yeah, time lock sucks, doesn't it, Roche? Yeah, and <laughs> Universe is just oh, rushing this Ag, so he's... Yep. It's a pretty interesting build. I actually, I've wanted to try this out, and I've wanted people to do this more often. This void offlane, I think it can work. So potential because has this new offlane, I think a lot of heroes can work. Yeah, we, we were talking about it a little bit yesterday as well. We yeah. were like saying like maybe even sanking and stuff like this. We yeah. were seeing it, but this is a nice change. I like seeing this. A yeah, lot. what the, the game just feels more open. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine going back six months and being like, yeah, in a professional match, you'll see a faceless void offlane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can you imagine that? Yeah. But uh, finally, that blink dagger is done. And the sad thing is, I mean. It's not the slowest blink in history. I mean, he's struggled so much. He does have up his treads and Null Talisman in the blink, but it's just so much work has been done by EG in the meantime to the tune of 15,000 gold lead now for Evil Geniuses. And when you have a Morphling and a Faceless Void this far ahead with a Marana that's uh, kind of riding on their coattails as well, yeah, that's just not a deficit you're likely to overcome as the game gets later and later. Yeah, now we're going to be seeing even this the Naga Siren transitioning into more of a carry type role. It looks like I think he's probably going to go for this Diffusal Blade. He has a Robe of the Magi up on him, so yep. that's going to be crazy because he's already attack. super farmed as well. He's level 10 on the support Naga. And Arteezy doing his job and leading the way. 4-0 on Fear, 4-1 on PPD to... Great games from uh, or two or great game from both Dyer's those players, I should say. Three and three attack. on Arteezy's morphling, so he's fed as much as he's eaten. But at the same time, here we go, Riaboros trying to jump in. Lincoln's is up on him, and Universe manages to catch a sphere that got two cakes. The target, do they have the burst? They do, and they're actually going to be able to ensnare Jiggle Billy as well. Behind the fight, Arteezy's going to have the Aegis popped off. Ida Sheep saved by the mech. Pedego uses Hand of God as well. Fear a little bit overextended, has to pull back and rejoin with his team. But all the time, this tier three being chopped away, and we actually see trying to engage back up. Nice coil, going to catch Fear and Arteezy. Fear cleaned up, and that's the best engagement they've had all match. Zai in some trouble as well, going to be forced to pop the Song of the Siren. Universe is right there with him. As we saw, he already used his ultimate. That's just going to allow them to walk back out of lane. Uh, and Rhea Boris is right there, trying to get a pick off or try to lock them down as best they can. Arteezy running right into Jiggle Billy, and yeah, he's just going to man up and able to replicate away, so no problem there. But a decent defense coming out of e -Hug. They lost a Tier 3, but most importantly, the racks still stand. Yeah, and very clutch timing for Zaidi who's asleep there, too. He just hit level 11, so it's only yep. a two-minute cooldown instead of that long three-minute cooldown that you would usually see. Yep. So at 14 to 8, I mean, again, you look at what E-Hug's got going on, checking out the Lifestealer. I mean, his item progression's not terrible. He's got up a Basher, he's got up his Armlet, and we're just 24 minutes in, and he certainly has that Midas going for him. But again, you know, whenever you have these, these strength carries like this, that as good as they can feel and as, as lethal as they can be, whenever they get a bit ahead or whenever they're just on par with farm, when you're up against a three-core lineup like this, arguably four when you see the Naga Siren, as you mentioned, going right for a defusal following the Vlads, the gold, there just isn't enough gold on the map, really. Someone on EG is probably going to remain out farm. Yeah, definitely. Crystal Maidens, but he's, I mean, the Crystal Maidens even doing so much for themselves yeah. because they have every single tower. All they're missing is two more of the, two more of these, like, uh, the Rax Towers, and then they they just have those two last base towers. So yep. PPD's got another 1,600 gold on him. He's got his four staff. He's level 11. It's it's really, really tough for Eco to come out of this scenario. They're going to be able to defend a little bit, but at one point it's just going to become too overwhelming because Arteezy can just... He can really just man up against two or three or even maybe even four or five of these players on the other team. So What we saw right there, he was literally farming in the face of Jiggle Billy and uh, Pandego just didn't care. In the meantime, to the south, Riaboros caught in yet another Chronosphere. 
And the damage Your is there. One last little bash. Dead. And Void adds another kill to his total. Two and one on that offlane. Void played by Universe. Been a great game for him. And the rest of e hug just trying to hold serve. We see up at top, Arteezy split pushing as best he can using his Manto Illusions. And Jiggle just being bursted down. The Lincolns will be popped. Tried to use open wounds. A little bit of damage coming out from the Visage, but he's ready to turn right back around. Just one shot, two shot. These familiars behind that. We see at bottom, the rest of EG pushing in, bringing down one rack, soon to be two. And e hug just being a little too spread out. I mean, this is just good play from EG, good movement. This is probably uh, just about the end. Yeah, it's getting pretty close to that. It's, the gold lead is just Dyer's way too tower much. All these towers, attack. especially since Ehug only has this one bottom tower taken out. It's unfortunate for them. I mean, their draft was a little bit weird, picking this Beastmaster second pick. I'm not sure. We don't really see that that often. We see the Beastmaster picked up sometimes, but definitely not a first two. I actually like the Beastmaster pick a lot in a lot of situations, especially as you mentioned. With that new offlane, just a little easier for him. You know, he can, he can get the job done. But yeah, I don't see the, uh, you're not, not going to see a Beastmaster band out early at all, mm -hmm. most of the time. And maybe a little bit of a tipping of the hand too much, and EG just able to capitalize on that. But, you know, Ehug coming out, their debut as five on land. Same for EG. EG looking like they're going to walk away with a win here, but I mean, Ehug, this is a nice stretch your legs kind of a game. They came in the underdogs. No one's going to be shocked to see them drop this first series 0-2 and fall to the lower bracket, but I feel like they've had some, some decent moments. They've been able to punish a little bit of EG's over-aggressiveness at times. Yeah, absolutely. And by no means that they play like terrible or anything. Right. EG just has been playing very, very well. Yep. Just like they usually do. They play this very greedy greedy type lineup and then it ends up working out Dyer's they got a couple tower. kills in the end of the game and then just got a couple towers and then boom they just yep. snowball entirely because they were fighting it this whole time with Midas's yep. so Arteezy at this point gigantic already has up a maelstrom to go with that Manta and just continuing to go to work using these illusions to keep all the lanes pushed and yeah at this point they can honestly just rotate the top if they want or just sit in the middle if they like and just basically starve them out. There's no way they're going to be able to come out of their base at all, barring a big five-man uh, five man wide on the side of BG. Rhea Boros, silence is at Arteezy, and he does not care. Here we go. They're going to jump. And Rhea Boros, caught by Universe again. Adaptive strike and some auto attacks. Enough to bring him down. Behind that, Arteezy, PPD, just going to work in hell. Zai just says, yep, we're going to go ahead and sleep. Fear missed with his arrow, but... Uh, ready to engage. I'm a sheep blown up. The damage output just way too high. They're two tanky cakes. Next on the kill list. Gets off the roar, but not going to accomplish much of anything. GG call. 19 to 8. Took him short of 28 minutes. EG in their debut series as this core five shows up and impresses. Walking away with a very nice 2 0 sweep of E Hug, who will now fall. To our lower bracket, EG will be meeting the winner of our next match, the winner of Team Liquid and Cloud9. Great play from Universe, though, overall. This offlane Void actually ended up working really well for himself, and he played it really smart. Every time Rio Boros would use his orb, an orb back or whatever and whatnot, he would jump right onto him and chronosphere him, and then what can you really do? He'd catch one or two people with it almost every time. So great play from Universe as well. But I think I still need to give this MVP overall for the whole series to Zai. He played yep. spectacular, absolutely. He found the picks. He found, used his sleep properly in this game. Last game, his visage was just absolutely amazing. I feel like, uh, you know, and it's, it's an easy thing to say. I mean, whenever you have the Marana, you know, and the Weaver from last game, Fear also played very well, made very few mistakes, uh, generally just did his job, and yeah. you know, it was 4-1 at the end of both series. That's yeah. just the mark of a, of a carry, is just getting things done. He doesn't have to be all over the place, but of course, I agree with you completely. Zai on the Naga Siren, really just making things happen in both, in both games, and that's a big reason why uh, Fear, for the most part, uh, kind of had the run of things. So. Um, yeah, I mean, recapping where we are, I mean, 27 minutes all the time it took. A very short series, pretty much across the board. I mean, I'm looking at, at, at E-Hug, and you know, Jiggle Billy played much better this game, but in the end, it comes down to Rhea Boros. Just an abysmal performance in game two. And, you know, and, and again, it's not as if it was a total personal failing of his. They dealt with him very well, and Void was basically focus firing him. He was saving the Croto and blowing him up every time he was off cooldown. Yeah. Well, looking ahead to our next series, before we uh, take it back out to the stage, my friend, predictions. Give me a couple of sentences about Liquid versus Cloud9. I think if Cloud9 pulls ahead one game, it's going to be really hard for Liquid to come back. Okay. Very and short words. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got, huh? Yeah. All right. We're ready to throw it right back out to the stage once again. This is the Monster Energy Invitational. EG wins 2 to nothing, advances through the upper bracket, while Ehog falls to the lower bracket and comes one series now away 
from elimination. Out on front, we've got Anna waiting to, uh, to talk to the players. Take it away, Anna. Thanks, guys. I'm here with PPD. Congratulations on going onward in the winner bracket. Yeah, let's hear it for EG. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, now let's go back to game one. What do you think was the, the biggest factor in you being able to overtake them? The casters mentioned a lot about the controlling of Marana and all that. You know, what was a big factor? Um, we had really strong solo heroes and really strong solo players. And even though they aggro tri and they got the early kill, um, aggro tri are really risky. And eventually we just forced them out with a like, few uh, good plays by us and uh, we were able to control the game. You were able to do the same in game two and emerge victorious. It was a fairly unique draft though in terms of the heroes that you picked and what they were used for. Can you tell us about that decision making? Um, I think the one you're talking about is the offlane void and that was inspired by IX Mike. So shout out to him. Uh, it's, it's not bad, I think, I think it worked well. Great, and now you're going to move forward to play the winner of Cloud9 versus Team Liquid. Who do you hope you're going to play and who do you think you're going to play or are they the same person? Same team. Um, I'd hope to play both at some time during this tournament. So either through loser bracket or winner bracket. And I do think Cloud9 is going to win. All right. Well, we'll see. Thanks, guys. Let's hear it again for EG. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with that next match soon. <laughs> 